And we are live. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Holy Crap, the Vlogcast. The Vlogcast comes from a skeptical point of view to answer some of the questions of why. The Vlogcast started as a combination of spite and the Streisand effect because every once in a while, YouTube goes ahead and says, you know what? Uh, things are just wrong, so you need to fix it. And then you go to fix it and it says, no, 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 everything's fine. Thanks. Because digital. I've got a I've got a long running argument about digital everything, but we'll save it for part of this is to follow through with the old adage that sometimes the journey is more important than the destination. I'm your main host, I'm Shujin Tribble. You can find me pretty much everywhere under that name. That's S H U J I N. Hi, good to be back with you. I'll uh, I'll explain about that in just currently the only one joining me at the moment. Right hand coast of the US. Unrenowned Tech, good morning. Yeah, it's kind of a weird morning, actually. I was trying to debate whether or not to watch Cocaine Bear, um, and I, then I found out they're making a cocaine shark. Meanwhile, I've learned that in Ohio, uh, they found a leopard with cocaine in its system. <laughs> you can't make this shit up, dude. This no. is great. No, apparently not. This country is so fucked. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> is what it is, man. I, I, I don't. <sighs> so yeah, I, I'm having a laugh at. at mm, yeah. At really, really sad, tragic things. Can't say that. So, hello everybody, am... and good to be back with you. It's uh, it's a, it's a weird day because there's, uh, there's stuff not going behind the scenes and stuff that is going on behind the scenes and drinking just good old-fashioned orange juice because because i decided to try coke zero instead of just standard diet coke that's it's usually not what as, I get. um it's not as fizzy like so i don't drink soda often <laughs> because too much carbonation and i disagree so it's mostly tea, coffee, plain water, that sort of thing. Coffee is always good. Yep. And uh, on the rare occasion I do have a Diet Coke, you know, there's a lot more carbonation in diet, standard diet sodas than there are in regular sodas. Anybody who's been in a belching contest will tell you that. And this seems to have about the same carbonation as a regular sugary soda. Maybe possibly a little less, but definitely not what I would get from a standard Diet Coke or Diet Pepsi. And it's actually sitting really well, so... And flavor's not bad, so... This might be a win for me. All right, then. Of course, you can always uh, you can always try to find yourself uh, vanilla Coke or um, coffee Coke, both of which are actually okay. pretty good. I, I tried coffee Coke. Um that abomination should never grace anybody's shelves, but, you know, everybody has different taste buds. Vanilla Coke, uh, I think it tries too hard to be a cream soda. I'd rather just have a cream soda. But I did come across something that, um, unfortunately, because it's a sugary-based soda, it didn't sit well with me. But the flavor of it was actually pretty neat. It was uh, regular Dr. Pepper, strawberries, and cream. And it had... Um, okay. It, it, it's like somebody tried to combine Dr. Pepper with a cream soda, not too heavy on the cream, mind you. And the strawberry flavor is almost like a, a watered down strawberry Jolly Rancher. So it's not too, too heavy on the artificial. And if they just made like a diet version of it, I'd be happy. Because <laughs> I try not to consume too much sugar anymore. Yeah, it's perfectly understandable and reasonable. So, good to be back with you guys. Uh, this is going to be a little bit on the weird side. Uh, I was hoping and anticipating for Bridget to be with us, considering that she's a lot busy right now. I'm not entirely surprised that she's not with us. Uh, Joseph, I hadn't heard from, so uh, chances are he's probably been busy and tired, which, again, it's early, oh, dark, stupid over there. Not worried about However, if you would like to be joining us, of course, as we record over on YouTube, you can do that, except, and I'll, I'll explain in a minute. 
And if you do, you can join us over on the live chat over there. Yeah, I have to be pointing this way, which for me is wrong because the live chat on my screen is over there. But because the freaking Discord video flips the left to right on your on your webcam for no discernible reason, and I can't flip it back, it is what it is. So, Stephanie, good morning. And yeah, thank you for letting me know about the audio also. But, you know, I think you're kind of um, being a little rude to the alternative viewers like myself when it comes to YouTube. You see, I only let my browser fill half of my window, usually when I'm watching YouTube and such. As such, the live chat is below the video. So you, by you not pointing down, you're, you're kind of being, you know, separatist? I don't know. If you look on the video as we feed it out there... The live chat is over there. Like yeah, but down I'm watching your feed. Well, you're doing it wrong then. <laughs> because I could just be pointing up at my name, pointing over at your name, pointing over at you, or down. We're not gonna talk about that. We're not gonna talk. It's syphilis. No, no. It could have been, except uh, I don't think it's got an incubation period of like uh, almost twenty years, so I don't, I don't think, I don't think it's a problem. <laughs> Anyhow, let me get things rolling over here because we got, we got I'll stuff. Go ahead. We got stuff. So let me get you rolling over here with five minutes on the clock. Your five minute freestyle starts right now. Live now. It's not spelled the way that you would normally spell it in English. In this case, it's spelled L-I-V. And some people remember, when I do the name for the 5-Minute Freestyle, I do it in all caps, and it's all just one word these days. Of course, as always, there's reason. L-I-V. Anybody that knows they're Roman, they know full well, oh, wait a minute, that's a number. Last weekend... I turned 54. And it's one of those things where, as I told my son, uh, you know, every once in a while I, I lose track because I got what year it was at one point when somebody asked how old I was. And I'm just like, okay, so it's 2022. So that means I've turned 53. No, wait, 2023. Damn, I lost a year somewhere. I forgot. Because I was born in 1969. I'm a year, well, I'm a number ahead of year. It's been an interesting time. I mean, 50, 50 years is, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a good start and up run. You know, you're theoretically, you know, after 50 years, you kind of know what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> no, no it, it doesn't work out quite that way. The thing that um, makes it really tough last weekend, especially, and I was not at all anticipating this. A good friend of mine died last weekend, Saturday, in the morning of my birthday. Drama queen that he was. Well, queen that he was. Drama queen. And for anybody that's thinking that I'm being mean-spirited in any way shape or form he'd be the first to go ahead and congratulate me for saying it the gentleman in question was known in second life as aaron seance he was the head the first head dj i should say over at the group in second life that i would hang out with and he was the he was the dj for the place uh, i don't remember how many nights a week he was show i think it was only fridays but i could be wrong it could have been like the entire week you know a couple of hours a night and i would be hanging out with folks and and there was finally one night where he's just like look i just want to have a vacation does anybody want to learn how to do the whole dj thing and it was after my wife passed got a i think it's a decent collection of music so I said, you know what? okay i'll learn 
So starting off with a Windows 2000 computer at the time. And the Winamp program with the streaming plugin, I got started 13, 14 seasons ago now. I forget how many years it's been. Could never get the damn microphone to work right with that. But all these years later, he and his legacy, they are going to live on. They have well outlasted the time that he was active with the group. He started things like doing the Friday night shows, uh, a morning show, uh, a morning zoo at night on Saturday nights, a list of things to talk about. And he kind of got me started to kind of go down this avenue. And this show, as a matter of fact, is also part of the legacy that he behind. Aaron was too young. Really was. Younger than me. It is fair for me to go ahead and say, fuck cancer. As a sideline to that, is there anybody that doesn't agree with that idea? The sentiment, fuck cancer. Does anybody disagree with that? Can we all agree this is a good thing? Why would we ever stop children from saying, just because it's got that one word in it? The sentiment is... I'm going to miss him dearly. No way I was going to be able to do the show last weekend because of I wish he were still here. But I guess in my particular case, and for all of us that knew him, appreciated him, we just kind of have to live on in his stead. So, that's the reason why last week um, we didn't do a show. I was in no condition. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Tech was the one who told me, look, <laughs> nobody's going to blame you if, you if you take the week off. And it's... Tech, arguably, this is one of the few times I've ever actually like listened to your advice and took it to heart quite that way. So, <laughs> seriously, just thank you for kicking my ass. I definitely need it. You're welcome. Yeah. Anyway, let's get things rolling over here. And Tech, it's 39. Thank you very much. See, I stopped using, okay, the running joke about being 39 years old is a holdover from Jack Benny. Jack, when he was doing the old-time radio stuff back in the, the 40s, for him, the joke of it was, there's nothing funny, I, 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 think, I think this is verbatim, there's nothing funny about turning 40. There is something funny about never turning 40. And that's where the joke came from. So there were, there were, a, lot of, there were a lot of jokes that went through all that, including, and not exclusively, the joke that at one point the folks from his hometown of Waukegan sent him his birth certificate so that he could summarily burn it so nobody would ever know. Um, another one was that uh, he had erased and changed the birthday so many times that there was no paper left in the birth year section of the document, so you, know, you, you get the idea. So it's worth it, it's fun, and it's one of those things. Um, and Stephanie is, uh, is uh, reminding me, you know, it, it would have been strange if you'd tried to do the show. Um, yeah. I pride myself, stupidly so, on trying to be super professional about doing these things, even though it's a, a voluntary thing. But it is... Uh, 
I knew. I knew, and I, 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 I wanted to lie to myself. I knew I wasn't going to be. And I just. It took tech telling me, just cut it out. For, for, for me to really. So, thank you all for understanding. Oh, and apparently we're trying to get Bridget in. Bridget Fitch needs a new in voice invite, video invite. Shouldn't. I mean, the, the, the invite goes out and then you just click into it. Yo, Bridget, if you've got the... Uh, you said she can't hear. Uh, if you've... Turn up your volume. Turn up your volume. Spell it right. <laughs> My volume is fine, thank you very much. No, 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 no. I was talking to her. <laughs> well, if she's, Smart you know. Dog. Pump up the volume. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll pause one second. Let me, turn, let me turn off the Discord video. There we go. Well, I try to see if I can get her in here hold on one second let me let me try ringing her i hope i don't drop the call that we're on oh let's see if that worked one ringy dingy <laughs> god i get that reference it's because you're old Two ringy dingy. Three ringy the bitch. Come on, man. There she is. Holy you hell. Turn the video back on. It worked. Oh, I had my sound turned way the frick up. Okay. I'm sorry I'm late, guys. Well, you I the internet. Oh, congratulations on the baby. Oh, wait, not that kind of late. Never mind. Oh, <laughs> a little too old for that. That's what everybody says, including Mother Teresa. But I had no internet when I got home, and I was a little bit late getting home anyway, because it was raining so hard I couldn't see Jack, and I was 45 minutes out, so yeah. Well, glad walked in the Walked in the door at 10.53 local, my time, and uh, yeah, I had no internet. And I all blame, of a sudden I, I have it. I blame com crap for that. They might not have been involved. You might have a different internet service provider. But I can I blame, still blame Tom Crap. It was Xfinity, and I'm like, what is up with this? But here I be. So, that ladies and gentlemen, from the Midwest of the U.S., Bridget Fish I'm has down decided... south right now. I'm down south right now. I'm in Mississippi. Decided to grace us with her presence. Yeah, I just come waltzing in fashionably late. Mississippi. Yeah, I'm in Mississippi. Most of the people don't know how to spell. That live there. It, it only has three syllables in it. It's Mississippi. 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 We'll go. We'll Mississippi. go with that. So yeah. guess that, what? That, that's like the miniature sippy cup at Seven Eleven. Yeah, something like that. But yeah, pretty much is how they say it down here. That works out good. You made it just in time for the scopes. Oh, let me pull them up. You go ahead. Oh you, my god. Go ahead and do that because you you're, you're going to be third in line. So let's Damn get it, it rolling. Ooh, I get to do Taurus. All right. Drop the link again because I do not see it. It's, it the... I am sorry. I can't scroll back up. Well, that's this laptop my... is going. That's not my fault. I don't have a mouse and this laptop's not playing nice. That's fine. We'll go... Okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. So there you go. It's going to be one of the... Time for the horrible scopes. I don't have my glasses on, damn it. For those of you that know what your astrological <laughs> sign, cool. Those of you that don't, buy a D12 with all the symbols on it and memorize what the symbols are because the symbols don't mean shit. I don't understand them. Myself. So let's get rolling over here. Aries, there is going to be a lot of musical trivia ahead and you get to lead it off. Richie Valens' song, La Bamba, was originally a traditional folk song from Veracruz, Mexico. Richie wasn't sure about blending it with rock and roll, but he did it, and it was released as a single with Donna. You remember the song? Oh, Donna. You know, nice, wilting. 
La Bamba was the B side on that single. Boo. So this week, something you think isn't worthy of attention will turn out to be more important to others than you could anticipate. By the way, we all did a parody of La Bamba. It was called Lasagna, and it was epic. <laughs> la la la, Lasagna. Why does that not surprise me? Taurus, just because you can find all those cartoons you grew up with on YouTube doesn't mean you should watch them anymore. Uh, quick note here. No, I'm not advocating people stop watching cartoons. Cartoons are awesome. Okay, back to the scope. The vast majority of them do not hold up at all. Don't even wonder about insipid plots, but the voice acting. Most of these shows had about six voice actors doing four characters each to fill out the show. I mean, Frank Welker alone. Just stop looking back. And, and I, you know, this is personal. I kind of agree a little bit about how some shows don't really hold up. Uh, case in point, like Animaniacs, right? Dude, the don't Super even. Friends. <laughs> the Super Friends. Mm -hmm. But Zan and Jaina were cool. I'm just. Although so, I think no. everybody should have to watch Josie and the Pussycats because they were awesome. <laughs> Before anybody goes ahead and says, but everything from the 70s sucked, might I remind you, Scooby Doo did not. Scooby Doo did not suck. Scooby Doo was awesome. But I didn't realize that Shaggy was a pothead until I was a grown-up. Jim, <laughs> Jim and I... On, as a kid, I knew there was something wrong with Shaggy. I was sheltered, okay? Apparently, he's also a vegan. And it's hmm. snacks. Yeah. Jim and I, did you know the word Applejack isn't just a name for a My Little Pony character, but... It's a specific term for making alcoholic cider. I did goddamn research this week. I believe you. The idea is to take fermented cider with an alcohol content of about 10%, freezing the liquid, and scooping the frozen water off the top, thereby increasing it to something more like, oh, 25 to 40% alcohol. So the next time you catch Rainbow Dash slurping up the family cider, know that she's a high-functioning drunk and the Apple family is her enabler. I did goddamn research, and I'm proud of myself. So what you're saying is, is Kellogg's Apple Jacks is actually a gateway cereal. Mm -hmm. It is. Yes. <laughs> it's, all, and it's delicious. Now all, I just gotta remember to pour my rum into it. All the way up to Weedabix. Yes, I can buy Weedabix out here, believe it or not. It's hey, actually, it's, you just want to be a Brit. I, okay, Weedabix, Tim Tam, uh, Thornton's chocolates. Yeah, I guess kind of, you know, just one of those. I just don't want to be boiling all of my food. <laughs> Cancer Moo Child. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm ragging on, on British cuisine. It's, it's hard not to. Cancer Moon Child, you may not realize it, but you are special. First, my last, every, and the answer to all my dreams. You're my sun, moon, my guarding star, and my wonderful. That's what you are. Don't let anyone sing you any different. There's Leo. some people. There are some people that actually understand that one, and I would be really happy for that. Leo, even after having moved house three times, you still have your old "quote unquote" travel music box. Not even CDs, cassette tapes from the 1980s. On the downside, you don't have a player in your car now. On the upside, nearly all these songs are available through one platform or another. But don't throw away your tapes just yet. They might still be needed. 
Virgo. There is an album out there called the Patuxent. Patuxent. But Patuxent Banjo Project. It's a collaborative effort to record some important banjo music to keep it alive and in posterity. This collection was released not in the 1980s or the 90s, but 2014. The banjo and bluegrass bands are not only still a thing, they thrive. Imagine it. No massive amps to lug from gig to gig. No pyrotechnics to set off, and sometimes only a handful of meters between the performers and the audience. And when was the last time you heard of a heckler at a bluegrass show? This week, go listen to some live performance somewhere. Exactly. Libra, we are going to make this easy on you. Food. This week, find your old cookbooks, find an interesting dish, make it. It doesn't have to be complicated, just make sure it doesn't have the name Helper in it. Alternatively, Easter is next month. Maybe plan on making Italian timpano. It's just a combination of... Alright, let me, let me get this order right. Pasta, uh, meatballs, sausage... Tomato sauce, hard-boiled eggs, uh, provolone, parmigiano, and pecorino romano cheeses. And you're going to need a Dutch oven. And about 10 hours to make everything. On second thought, just do all the reading and planning this week. This is going to take a while. Do not, do not insult your Nona's memory by half-assing. Sounds delicious. Oh my god, I look at, I, I've never had this, but looking at the pictures of what this is, this, timpano is, um, it is an Italian meal cake. I have no other way to describe it. It is an Italian layered cake meal. Honestly, I think timpano is what um, the Chicago deep dish pizza aspires to be. And it fails. It would. It. <laughs> oh my God. Chicago deep dish pizza is overrated. Chicago yeah, deep me. dish pizza is otherwise called a kiddie pool. So, I don't hate it. I just when I want a slice of pizza, it's not something I go for. But there are days I'll eat it and enjoy it. But I would love to make a timpano sometime. In fact, um, binging with Babish. Did an ep uh, they do episodes where they do uh, food from television shows and movies and such, and they did a timpano, and it was just, it was actually kind of beautiful. And I was looking at that, going, you know, based on his instruction and everything else, I could make it just from his video. So yeah, looks cool. Scorpio, there's something special about musical tributes you should know this week. Back in 1989, there was an album called Happy Anniversary, Charlie Brown, where lots of musical artists cover the music from the Peanuts TV specials. One track in particular is called The Red Baron, performed by Lee Rittenauer. If you played that for someone who didn't know, they'd swear it was just a cool jazz piece and not a song about the most famous world or one ace. This week, re-examine your preconceived notions. You pronounced his name spot on. Well done. I also had the album. Do you then? My mm. mom got it back then. Just I was still a little young to go out and buy music. It's a it's a great it's a great album. It really is. Yeah, it was. And I love that song. Yeah. Sagittarius. Next. Speaking of preconceived notions, remember when Syndrome said, and when everyone's super, no one will be? He forgot an important part in all his plans. Superheroes have a tendency to be subpar in the quick thinking department. Superman, for all his amazing Kryptonian learning, is still beaten by Batman because he had to learn to be smarter, plan better than everyone else to win. 
Power doesn't make the hero. Strength of character can. I am Syndro! You're right. Tool, As buddy. he flings the superhero away. Because ah, he... great. And then he's got to go after him again. <laughs> he's... That's like a big kid. I was laughing my butt off when I first saw that movie. A... I don't care how you old you are. That movie was funny. It was also creepy. So, good on yeah, that. Yeah, especially with the uh, health insurance. Capricorn, this week, do not do any electronics work of any kind. Yes, your first car's audio system was amazing. Yes, we're still impressed that you added a bigger alternator to your car to power the system when it was on. You do not remember what happened when you slipped and hit the terminals on that one Farad capacitor with the screwdriver, do ya? You see all those people wincing around you who hear this? They weren't there, and they know how painful that was. For anybody that doesn't know, one Farad, I mean, what is that really? Dude, ask somebody that knows anything about electronics. What happens when you cross the terminals on a one Farad capacitor? They will answer with bad things. Blow oh, that sucker. You know, when I was when I was looking up information about those, I was looking up to find out what the biggest ones you could get. You can get a ten. You can get a ten Farad capacitor, and the sucker is like the size of my forearm. I had a kid in middle in junior high whose father was an electrician. He came in with this uh, brick that he had a nine volt attached to. But if he touched it to your arm, your arm did funny things like flop around like a dead fish. <laughs> Electricity is fun. <laughs> now you get expelled for that shit. Aquarius, your musical prowess with non-musical instruments is impressive. Using a five-gallon bucket as a drum is pretty cool. But have you ever tried to cover through the fire and flames? On spoons? Even if you do learn how to do it, you won't be the first. This week, try to come up with a new angle on an old idea. That is exactly the video. He tech posted the, the video from YouTube in our chat. That is exactly the video that I found that inspired that one. And he's not that See, good either. Well, no, I have it's, I will it's have terrible. To Almost spoon playing is kind of bad. Don't let the doctor uh, hear you say that. I've oh, heard some decent spoon playing with a with one of those bands, you know, like where they have the jug and the uh, wash bin guitar, and you know the. You mean like the they would junk. have down here in Mississippi? Maybe. Yeah, a junkyard Maybe. band. I think is what they used to call it. Jug band. It was on Hee Haw. Yep. But I've heard good bands like that, mm -hmm. you know, and they had spoons and other things too. And I mean, yeah, there's good spoon playing. And then there's just whacking a spoon against your leg. That's usually <laughs> called BDSM, but I mean, whatever floats your boat, man. No, no judgment here. Judgment free zone. Oh yeah. Pisces, the Greek muses have smiled upon you this week. Take a trip out to Los Angeles and visit the Pan Pacific Auditorium, the place that was the setting for the movie Xanadu. It burned down in 1989, but now that you're in California, find a nearby mountainside and build your evil lair so you can plan on how to take over the world. Because if you're going to do it anywhere, I mean, that, what, what better location? Those are your horrible scopes for this week. If you like what you got this week, please let me know. I work really hard on these most of the time. Mm -hmm. I would love to hear. I will have these well, posted at the end. I will have these posted at the end of the week as usual. Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, Discord, you know, whatever hasn't exploded by then. We'll, we'll see how that plays out. Um, yeah, so that kind of reminds me uh, about something that I need to tell you guys about. Um, there will be no show next weekend get that out there i'm going to make sure that i uh, put it out there on all the socials 
Next weekend, Little One and I are going up to Toronto for the day, Saturday, because Fernal Equinox is happening, and, you know, Aww. yes, we will be masked and, and all the stuff, but, you know, the last couple of years, it's been dubious at best getting across the border, and rightly so. So we're going to spend the day over there, and then um, Saturday night, we come back. They're, I'm still not done with that part. Sunday, he goes back to school because he's home for the week, and then I'm taking a couple of day trip out. I'm, I, I will only go as far as to say that I will be passing uh, and probably eating at an actual honest-to-God Arthur Treacher's Fish and Chips and an actual honest-to-God White Castle. Just be prepared to be disappointed. I'm Arthur Treacher's. I'm afraid of because, that. Yeah, like uh, Long John Silver's has fallen so far. Yeah, they have fall. They have bottomed out, in my opinion. Uh, they changed so many of their different recipes, including the breading, the oiling times, everything else. It's just like it, it, it's disgusting. It's yeah. I, I can't even recommend that you get a piece of fish from Long John Silver's and take the breading off because the fish they changed the recipe on that too. It's, it's disappointment. Yeah, that's that's why I'm I'm I mean it's one of the few that's left, so that's why I'm I'm hopeful, but at the same time, the nostalgia bomb for me goes back a good thirty years easy at this point. I mean, it's so, like if I yeah. pass by a Howard Johnson's, I'll go, "Ooh, look at Howard Johnson," and I will keep on driving. Sadly, I haven't I had our destroy Arthur's... that part of my memory. I haven't had Arthur's creatures since I was probably twelve. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a. It's been on the other hand. Long. I can say that Fuddruckers is still delicious. Never been. Oh, to. I love Fuddruckers. There used to be one up here. Never, never checked it out. Yeah, there used to be one in Annapolis, but that closed down. I know there's uh, at least two in Pennsylvania. Uh, one near where I drive through when I do my uh, custody exchanges. So it's kind of become tradition uh, to get a Fuddruckers burger now. With me and my offspring. I don't know and, if they still uh, have it in Charlotte or not, but that's where I went. Stephanie's well, got cool a, They have different kinds of meats, though, now. Stephanie's got a point over here. Real fish and chip is cooked in lard. Good luck finding one in the UK, never mind the US. Um, well, in the US, I can go into a butcher shop and I can, or, or any of the places that have a butcher shop and I can actually get lard. I can also get prepackaged lard in uh, the grocery section, refrigerator. <laughs> Yeah, we can we can buy it, but uh, the 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 idea you have of to make using it, it yeah, the the idea of using it uh, here is well played down, as you can probably imagine. We know for well that consistently eating is definitely bad, and having it even once in a while is not such a great idea. And it's not that economical to you know just get it for a, a one off because what are you gonna do? You you gonna freeze it? I mean, you could after you've used it, but at the same time. Eh, um, I think it is really good for cornbread, though. So lard has a lot of really good uses. Where animal fat, uh, most lard that you get is actually pig fat. Hmm. Um, first off, if you're good at making pie crusts, which I am not, okay? So I buy my pie crusts. But if you're one of those idiot savants in terms of pie crust making, oh yeah, and instead of using butter, you use lard, you will produce a, a pie crust in a way that most other people will never think of ever have and when they enjoy it they'll probably face mostly disappointment going forward from there because it makes an amazing pie crust yep. uh it doesn't matter if it's dessert or a meat and veggie filled pie crust it doesn't matter it works for both um my folks actually told me when i had told them about the heart attack grill they cooked their fries in lard and my uh, mother had told me that back when they were younger and you would go to a diner or something and you would get fries or something that was fried, most likely the fryer w contained lard. Mm -hmm. And that when you have a, f it, it's like the difference between going to McDonald's and Burger King and getting a fry from there or even Wendy's and then going to Five Guys who cooks theirs in peanut oil. Your mm. oils flavor your foods. Yep. Well, lard has a unique flavor. And when you 
fry french fries in it and you eat the french fries you'll never have an experience like that again and if you do it once in a blue moon and you don't have any kind of serious heart problems and stuff like that you can get away with it that used to be all my grandma used when she cooked yeah because it it works it's got a it's got a unique property it's got unique flavor and it 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 is really just special on its own um what I was going to point out, however, is out here in the Buffalo, New York area, on a weekly basis, typically Friday nights, almost all year round. Um, sometimes Saturdays also, depending as to you know how much they've gone through. In the Buffalo market, fish, uh, a a fish fry, which is kind of fish and chip, is like a, a staple at almost any place that you go to go eat. It is a big piece of, um, sometimes it's cod, sometimes it's haddock, um, or I, I, I've, I've, there's like three different fish that it could be, and depending catfish. as to, uh, no, not catfish, it's a, it's a white fish, so it's, it's, uh, it's cod, anyway, and, um, it's, uh, it's french fries, you know, what we call french fries, pump frites, and, um, for the sides, you can get, and this is where it gets really weird for me because I, I did not grow up with this stuff, um, macaroni salad and potato salad. I grew up with, we had uh, macaroni salad and potato salad every summer when we were doing barbecues and such. Well, yeah, but fish fries here in Buffalo, all year round. All year round. On a Friday night, and like I said, Maybe Saturday if they haven't gotten rid of all their fish because I mean, yeah. so See, we didn't do fish fries. We did we did speedies and potato salad, macaroni salad, tuna salad, uh, and burgers and hot dogs, but mostly speedies. Well, we had a fresh fry fish fry here last weekend at oh, the there house. You go. Yeah, had some friends over. Yeah. But well, we didn't have macaroni and potato salad, though. We had coleslaw and uh, hush puppies. Yep, there you go. And Pollock. Yeah, there you go. That that was the other one I was trying to remember. Thank you. So one of the big reasons why uh, here in the States, lard doesn't have a big footprint anymore it's, is because of its competitor, Crisco. Mm. Crisco has a very long shelf life, being shelf-stable. It was able to be used for a lot of different things, and you know we attacked lard. You know, animal fat. Oh, it's got this horrible stuff. Use Crisco. You know, Crisco. It's not animal fat. Use margarine instead of butter. And it turns out later on, it doesn't matter what you use. A lipid is a lipid. Flavors flavor. <laughs> Proteins protein. Bacon fat should all. This Amen, is man, brother. By the way, did you know you could get a two and a half pound bucket of lard on Amazon for fifteen bucks? You know, um, by, the, by Goya of all places. I'm not buying it's, from Goya. It's, let me rephrase that. It's refined lard. <laughs> no, we we will not advocate buying from Goya. Because I, no, no, I was just saying. I thought no, no, it no. was funny because they supported the former guy. And we'll leave it at that. This. Is episode 443 on the docket, Your Honor. Religious Petri dishes. Can you hear me oh, gritting just... my teeth? Yet again, another situation came up. Well, this was now two weeks ago because, you know, we pushed the show back. Where it turns out, there was a, for lack of a better way of putting it, a weekend long event. I forget exactly what time frame it was on but it was one of these you know multi multi hour kind of religious revival kind of thing that had people in close proximity with each other holding hands and indoors together and and you know singing and praising and holding up their hands and, and being close to each other only to find out that somebody had a really super communicable disease that's a bad bad idea and oh i'm sorry did, did anybody ask about masks yeah i got bad news for you so 
we need to have a talk again about just how bad we're not going to name the the name the whole anti-vaccination thing how bad this is because we have precedent and well we pretty well know what we can do about it for ourselves but probably stands to be a little bit more aware as to what's been so um yeah tech i'm gonna start over on you because you you pinged me before the show just to double check you read over the story i'm assuming about measles coming back to the u.s yeah the measles outbreak i mean yeah because that was that was the one <gasps> two and a half pounds of wagyu oh god sorry i was looking at lard buckets Move that aside. Got distracted. Into the show. So yeah, uh, rubella or rub, rub, the I can't pronounce the the virus for measles. Probably. Bad, just bad. Rubella. Rubella. Okay. Yeah, uh, I was looking at the. I was like, you know, I never had measles because I did get vaccinated for it, but I want to see, you know, how bad does it really get with measles? Like, what's the the light heart symptoms? You know, the stuff people are familiar with to what shit can really go wrong if you get this thing. Right? Oh, this was the stuff that we were talking about before? Yeah. Oh, encephalitis is always fun. Uh, yeah, and I had to I, I had to look up the big words. <laughs> it's like, oh, brain swelling. Yeah, I know brain swelling. Um, but I also didn't realize that it, it can cause a pregnant woman to miscarry. Oh, yeah. Um... Or that if the child does live, there's a high probability of serious birth defects to its heart, eyesight, hearing, uh, intellectual disability, liver, spleen. That Again, that's assuming the kid lives. Um, and that for, like, guys, uh, testicular swelling, anybody? Yeah. Measles can cause your testicles to go whoop. And not, and not in a good, good way. way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In, in the very, very bad way. Not to mention the inflammation of nerves, which where people get pain from the measles experience. But yeah, um, I didn't know a lot of that stuff. I, I didn't know it, it, it could do stuff like cataracts and deafness and uh, all that. This shit's I, I no didn't joke. Know it could cause. Yeah, well, no, I've never thought of measles as a joke. I, I know what kind of misery and suffering it causes kids, like in school. You know, going through pain of, of of the measles virus, but I didn't know it went that bad because I never saw anybody with it that bad. But thanks to the power of the internet, we have access to more information than we did in just such a small stamp sampling, and I think that's where a lot of people are functioning from still to this day, is that they think back to their childhood, which is a small sample size again. And they're only seeing their own experiences. So if they never experienced measles or they did experience measles and it was only, they only had a mild negative effect. Well, it's just like those COVID deniers. You know, the ones who said, oh, I had COVID and it was like having the flu. Or I had COVID and it was like having a, a small code or a, a cold. Or I had COVID and, you know, I didn't even know it. And I I was apparently, you know, I took the test, I got it, and but it didn't affect me. You know, yeah, okay, great. Your genetics are of the kind that protected you. But not everybody has those genetics. And measles, like COVID, is airborne. Well, measles is truly airborne. COVID can travel on uh, uh, moisture in the air through spittle and contact and things like that. So Bridget, do you know a little bit more from the techie part of it all? Measles. Yeah, correct anything I said that may have been wrong, please. Yeah. So measles in a uh, in an enclosed environment with twenty thousand people overall who were in direct contact one way or another through breathing, holding hands, that kind of thing. Memory serves uh, measles. The out of 20,000 of these people that would have been in contact, uh, the likelihood of someone being infected at this point is probably 
something approaching seventy five percent. I would say pretty damn high, because uh, the R naught on that is anywhere between fourteen and eighteen. And for people who don't know what an R naught is, that means you know for every you know person who gets it, they can transmit it to between fourteen and eighteen people um, on average. And so uh, the shit is like extremely contagious. And especially since a lot of anti-vaxxers hang out at these kinds of events, the probability is pretty high that that's not going to be the only case that pops up. And since people have been traveling, you know, from other states to go to this thing, it's going to travel to other states. Yep. Just like that, um, when the uh, motorcyclists went to that... Um... Florida Keys uh, thing that they event that they do every year, and then they travel up north, and they made a COVID bloom. Right yep. on the money. Uh, the one in particular that I was thinking of uh, wasn't Florida, but it was somewhere yep, Sturgis. Sturgis. Yep, that was the one. Yep. Oh, Sturgis. I'm sorry. I'm. Th I wait. Doesn't Sturgis? Don't they start at the south and then drive up north and then celebrate? People drive in from wherever the hell they are. So it's basically a mass oh, migration. Oh, it's not a start at one point, go to another, no. and then celebrate kind of thing. Okay, I'm sorry. I, no. I it's sorry it's, to the people who attend Sturges. I don't attend Sturges, obviously. I just read about the. Event. You know what? This time out, I'm gonna say, you know, screw them all for having done it at the time that they did. Because no, I mean for mis for misdescribing no, the I, event. I, I got you. I, I got you. I apologize for that. Okay, that's fair. But the fact that they went ahead and they continued to do it during what should have been guys don't go anywhere um, so that we don't spread anything anywhere. And they just said, fuck you, my freedoms and <laughs> and spread shit all over. If they weren't infected by the time they got down there, there's a better chance that they did on the way home, which meant better chance of infecting more people after they get out of that particular Petri dish, too. Thanks, people. And as Stephanie has rightly pointed out, measles, um, on top of everything else, can kill. Just the thing that can, yep. the the thing that hurts me, the thing that hurts me the most about this, is that with these religious groups. they will bring in the kids with them because it's a community thing, a family thing. It's a, it's a, everybody gets together because they're all part of that in-group. If you'll go with me on this one for a second. So you want everybody to be involved with you, everybody that wants to be. And the kids are along for the ride, you know, the little ones, because, you know, well, the family, what are you going to do? You're going to deny them the opportunity of being with all these other people and meeting new friends and I mean what better opportunity I mean I get that don't get me wrong I don't like the idea behind it but I get it but when this suddenly becomes a thing and you've got kids who are in their single digits who are at risk of contracting communicable diseases like this in groups where the hesitancy towards vaccination is stupid high. Little, little coffin boxes don't cost too much less than full size boxes. Don't do that to yourselves and your families, but you know, why listen to us? It's just in this day and age, there should not be any kids dying from communicable diseases that we have vaccinations for. Should not be a thing. All right, so let's go, let's go through some of these really quickly because it, it is kind of important because so many of these vaccinations that we have gotten over the years, and, and Stephanie had pointed out, at one point uh, early in life, the vaccination schedules that we take for granted, if you will, now, or not exactly take for granted, weren't a thing quite at that point yet. Um, the most notable one that I remember now, because I was 
totally floored by it. Chicken pox. I, I, I did not know that there was such a thing until it came up when Tiny Dribble was at the doctor's. Like, all right, so uh, we're going to be uh, looking at uh, doing chicken pox. We want to have make sure that that one's in. I'm like, that's a thing? Yeah, that's a thing. Wow. Okay. Now, I never heard about anybody getting seriously screwed up from chicken pox. I had it twice myself. Kid. Shingles. So, yeah, I would very much like to see about getting that uh, that shot, but at uh, $200 per shot, give or take, or, well, give, because it's a little bit more than that, if I remember right. Um, it's, uh, not Not really that viable well, well since you've already had it, Canada, it see if you can get it in Canada that is something that was that was brought to my attention the possibility of that so maybe that's maybe and Bridget I'm sorry what was it I was going to say that there's no point in your getting that, vac that vaccination because you've already had it no, and but, chicken pox but for shingles but the shingrix I would take I mean, they've got vaccinations specifically to prevent you from getting shingles, and that's what I would do. Yeah, the downside is the cost. So we'll try to find some way of making sure that that works. Um, Bridget, for you, uh, a vaccination where it's just like, you, you don't even think about it anymore, but the, the common good that it does at this point is just, just can't undersell it. Polio. And Holy it's in the shit. water supply in New York. That's a good point. I didn't even think of that one. Polio. And they actually had a case in New York. And I think the guy was like 36 years old that caught it and ended up paralyzing him. Polio. Give folks a, a quick rundown. Polio will do what to you besides, obviously, you know, paralyzation. Yeah, asking for a quick rundown on that. Um, I'm going to give you like a flu-like illness, but um, other than paralyzing people, I can't think of anything that's like real super serious with it. I guess that could kill you. Well, I mean, it depends as to what it paralyzes. Paralyzes your well, diaphragm. Well, I mean, that's true. That could be a, that could be a, that could be a. Iron lungs bad. are no longer a thing now. There's only yeah. like two that are in existence in the United States, so. Yeah. Well, according to the CDC, one out of four people who catch the polio virus infection will have flu-like symptoms, including sore throat, fever, tiredness, nausea, headache, stomach pain, that last a few days, possibly a week, then go away on their own. A smaller amount of people will develop more serious symptoms, such as paralysis and meningitis. So uh, apparently meningitis, the infection of the covering of the spinal cord and or brain, occurs in about one to five out of a hundred people with polio virus infection, depending on the virus type. The paralysis, where you can't move any of your parts of your body, but it doesn't have to be a complete paralysis. It could also just be a severe weakness in the arms and legs. Both occur in about one out of 200 people to one in 2000 people, depending on the virus type. And, you know, considering the lower possibility of getting paralysis the response when the polio virus came out was we we, we need to get we, we need to get the vaccine because it's unacceptable mm -hmm. yeah. stephanie has also pointed out um that the shingle shot is a thing uh my gp search uh search was doing in mass i had chicken pox as a child cost zero it's the difference between you know, nationalized healthcare and this best, capitalistic crap that we have here. You know, the the best healthcare in the world if you have unlimited funds. Oh, by the yeah. way, there is a post polio syndrome. Get this. Oh no. If if a child has um, polio, right, and they have the uh, the lesser infections, right, and they make a full recovery, later on. 15 to 40 years later, as adults, they can develop new muscle pain, weakness, or even paralysis. So even if you get over polio, 
you're still not over polio. Kind of the same way with if you get measles, you ain't over anything for, wait, shit, how long is it? Measles, measles, uh, measles, wait, is, is it measles that I'm thinking of that, that like destroys your entire immune system? Yeah. Okay. And that takes what, another almost decade, decade and a half to rebuild? Well, I mean, you would have to start from scratch. Everything that you've ever been exposed to. Which means every vaccination schedule you ever had from birth. All over again. Every Plus, virus that comes around, any cold that comes around, anything. I, you know, I... St- Ooh, who loves it? Who who doesn't love a good tetanus shot? There was uh, there was a movie uh, in the seventies. Um, Those aren't painful. <laughs> the boy in the plastic bubble. Yep, I remember that one. I remember the parody that. or the good one. The good one. The, okay. Uh, the one with John Travolta in it, I think. Gotcha. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Not I the newer parody. Okay. I didn't know that there was, okay, anyway, I, I yes, the only reason very. I remember it is because it was on, after it was in the theaters, it came to um, uh, subscription television, cable TV, home box office here in the States. So it was, you know, it was on, and I saw it as a kid, because, you know, that's, that was what, what was on. I have not seen that since... I don't know what year it came out. It, it doesn't matter. I'm going to, even if I cut it off at like 19, I have not seen that, that film since easy 1980. Mm-hmm. I still can remember for me, having seen it as a kid of just not being able to understand what could have possibly happened to this person that they are basically in an environment that somebody sneezes on the, on the cover could kill him. And that's not very far off from what somebody could end up being. Yeah. And we don't even think about it in the terms of, well, people who go through chemotherapy and, and cancer treatments and whatnot, they are super immunocompromised. Maybe not quite to that extent, but, uh, yeah. My mom is right now. Yeah. She has zero immune system. Yeah. And Which, she's going to have to get all of her vaccinations all over again. Yep. Yeah, by the way, that was a really, that was a really cute picture. Guess what the TR is on. It was, <laughs> actually really um anyway uh and stephanie is also pointing out and properly so we pay for health care with our taxes wes has the most expensive medical care in the world best i know i was being tongue uh france or germany better on it would be you could take a dart and throw it at a f- flat map of the earth and probably find somewhere with better health care, except for Antarctica, because they don't have any, really. That's the way that that is. Uh, and also continues, despite the current government trying to destroy the NHS, is hang on and praying for a labor movement. Yeah, we are really collect. I don't know about the rest of the guys. I don't follow nearly as much as I would like to with a lot of the world news, but I, I really, really am hoping for you on this one. We got enough shit over here to worry about on our own, but I'm I'm really hoping for you stuff. Be there yeah, I mean, if anybody over there thinks that it's a good idea to go to the U.S. model, I'm sadly mistaken. Um, and uh, tech, yeah, you're looking up all the information on these for you vaccination that again just. Don't even think about it anymore. Can't overstate how how important it actually has been. What? I'm uh, you lost me. Wait, what? Well, we 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 went down 
about measles. We've got polio. I mentioned about chicken pox because for me, I just didn't even think about it, but it's a good thing for long term. Mm -hmm. Polio, don't even think about it anymore, but oh my God, that's such a, you know, I mean, again, we do not manufacture our lungs anymore, and thank you very much for that. So I'm kind of wondering if there is a, uh, a vaccination in particular that you can think of where it's just like, yeah, um, this is this is a good, this is a very, very good, and you don't even really think about it anymore. Pertussis. That was one of them. I'm not a doctor. Because whooping cough is... Oh, whooping cough. Not yeah. something you want. Like I said, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> it's like if you ask me to describe a computer problem to somebody who doesn't understand computers, the last thing I want to use is technical terms or the legitimate technical names, the more common layman names is what I would have to use. Well, okay. I'm just saying, I know cough. what whooping cough is. I don't know the freaking medical name for it. That's fine. But for whooping cough, though, yeah. Yeah, I've... yeah, I mean, if anybody, if, if, let's put it this way. For people out there who don't think whooping cough's a big deal, I challenge you. Open YouTube. Do a search for whooping cough. Child. Watch the video. Okay? You can ignore all the commentary about the statistics and everything else. What I want you to pay attention to is just the child with whooping cough. That's all I want you to pay attention to. Not not the person who's blabbing either to hear themselves speak or give you a medical diagnosis or, or whatever they may be doing. Just focus on the child who's exhibiting and demonstrating the signs of what whooping cough is. And tell me if your heart breaks. If it doesn't, you lack quite a bit of empathy. Seriously, you may want to see a doctor about that so that you can get tested for something for several somethings, possibly, and see if there is something that you can do to compensate for that. You know, whether it's wiring in the brain, whether it's just not learned, whatever. I don't know, okay? But you have a serious lack of empathy, and that's a problem. And you should seek help. I, I do not say this to make fun of you or belittle you. I say this only that please talk to somebody who knows more than you or I. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Because to see a child uh, suffering from whooping cough should break anybody's heart. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't even... It, it, it's not one of those ones that I had really thought about, but... The idea of getting the HPV mm -hmm. vaccine. Human papilloma it, virus. Yeah, and, and to realize that what you're talking about is preventing cancer. Maybe not as, like, the, the, the most important part of it all, but as far as I'm concerned, hearing that it helps prevent cancer and cut its rate down like crazy... I mean, ha, ha, again, going back to my opening, how can you look at that and go, yeah, you know what? Bring on the possibility for rolling the bones on cancer in a uterus. I mean, come on, who who cares? Well, some of these religious white jobs do. They yeah. don't want people to have access to that because they're like, sex is supposed to have consequences. It does. It feels good. It helps me go to sleep at night. But they want it to have deadly consequences. It does. It's about on par with me not getting coffee. Stay the fuck <laughs> away from my coffee. By the way, if there's oh, one thing... To the, to the guys who think that HPV only causes cancer in women... Uh, no, it can, it can cause cancer in your penis. Yes, it can. Yeah. And if you're gay, it can cause cancer in the butt. Uh, even the, if you're not gay. Yeah. Well, even if you're not gay, yeah, it still causes cancer in the butt. Yeah, there is that. There is. What? What? In the butt? Butt? I'm 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 loath to say this one, but 
I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll say it. There was, there was one time where my wife wanted, she, she had a headache and she actually told me that she wanted to have sex because it would get rid of the headache, ironically enough. Oh, they did a scientific study on that like a long time ago. And they found that people who go through orgasm temporarily experience um, an elevation in the amount of pain, their, their pain tolerance. And it do, it's to do with all those endorphins and chemicals that are going through your body, dampen out the pain response. Pain, endorphin, sex, I have no idea what you're talking about. And on another positive is blood flow from all the, assuming you're active during sex and not just laying there like a limp doll. No idea some whatsoever. Some people like that too. I'm not kink shaming. No idea whatsoever what you're talking about. Sure you don't. That's okay. Ignorance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> people wonder why I miss my wife. What's it do? Because I got nobody else to talk about with this stuff, so... Mm. So just wash your hands, then. You'll be fine. Oh. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, what, you, what you just said is now reminding me... Um, uh, I, I'm wondering if they are going to have... Uh, up, up Toronto, for the, for the con, if they're going to have any kind of um, sanitation uh, stations all over the place. I would assume so. But at the same time, I'm kind of wondering if maybe we should get like a little personal size thing. For I don't know. Uh, I would take one anyway, just to be safe. It's probably not a bad idea. All right. So there's that. Um... <sighs> okay, so... We who follow facts, and yes, I'm, I'm, I'm bouncing off of uh, Steffi had said, side note, I watch Midas Touch a lot. The current House committee meetings are great fun as the Dems destroy the GOP arguments with those of us who pay attention to facts know full well what the statistical history is of these communicable diseases. Communicable diseases, there we go, from before vaccination were available and after vaccinations were available. And it is impossible. It is truly impossible to look at the data and argue differently. And we know for well that there are people who have argued, who have argued that the rates of infection for immunized disease X doesn't matter what it was. The reason why it decreased at that time is because there had been enough people who had been infected that the virus no longer had anywhere to travel. To. So it was just naturally falling off at the same time. Correlation is not causation. There is one that shows that that's utter bullshit. Smallpox. Smallpox, we know full well, there was effort, a huge effort, a worldwide inoculation program in order to eradicate it. And in the early 1970s, the last wild infection for smallpox happened the very last one and it's gone why can i say that this one is definitive because paleontologists egyptologists have found the signs of they have found the paintings the markings the hieroglyphs the 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 pictures that show that smallpox was known to mankind over 10,000 years ago. And then all it took 
was a handful of years for mankind to just find a way and get rid of it. Categorically. It's no The last longer. known case was in Somalia in 1977. So three years Mid-70. later, the WHO declared uh, smallpox eradicated. Last I Apparently remembered... Is... Yeah, go ahead. And the last I remembered, there were uh, a handful of facilities with, with uh, some of it available for research purposes. I get that. There is a certain amount of terror associated with that, but the idea of having it so that it can be studied and researched and understood better, I'm on board for that. But the amount of security for something like that, in my head, is absolutely befuddling. Now, you were going to say, and I'm sorry, Aaron. Yep. Oh, I was going to say, in 1980, the World Health Organization declared it to be eradicated. And that, uh, supposedly, it's the only infectious disease to ever achieve this distinction. So far. So far. But with the amount of anti vaxxers that we've got all over the place, um, I doubt we'll ever have another one until the anti vaxxers are you know, uh, actually start paying attention to facts and science instead of feelings. At the risk of being branded as being a bad person, they will either pay attention to the science and the data, or they will simply slowly eradicate themselves from the equation. Darwin will have his way. And the sad part of it is, it, well, the, the sad parts, I should say, A, doesn't have to be that way. Doesn't. And two, you can call me a bad person all you want for having stated it, but the cold hard facts are the cold hard facts. If there is even a Pers- a, a fraction of a fraction of a percent past 50% towards something, it's a certainty that it will happen. It's just a question of when. And if it's a matter of that, these people who are older and set in their way, they don't have to be like 50, 60, 70 years old. Older as in they are the parent level. If they're so set in their ways that they won't change for whatever reason, they are either going to become infected themselves or quote-unquote age out of the population, if you will. But we know full well from experience, the younger folks, younger generations are the ones who have been listening more and paying attention more. And following along with it more. They're the ones who, again, past that 50% point, are the ones who are going to be the safer. The ones who haven't been? The odds will never be in our favor. You'll pardon me for using an expression. It's just a question of when. You know? We humans, we don't really think in terms, the the long terms for these things. The anti-vax movement will eventually sputter out. It's just a question of when. Going to have a lot of until that. That is part about it is it's the the young that are gonna take on the big You know what would be interesting? Completely unethical, but very, very interesting. Here's here's a thought. Measles 
we've already established, will destroy your immune system. Which means Reboot. every vaccination you'd ever had, gone. China just sketch. Shake, shake, shake. Done. These people... Ooh, so we should give the anti-vaxxers all, all measles. Yeah. Consider that a minute. If they put their money where their mouth is, vaccinations are bad. We have the technology of taking it all away for you. What well, do you Mother say? Mother Nature does. Yeah. I mean, six of one, half dozen of the other. But, yeah. And you know, if, uh, if, if we take it away from them, no, 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 then... not, not, not that we take it from them. No. They volunteer to give it up. Yeah, yeah. As assuming they volunteer to get infected by measles to reset their immune system. If they wind up needing a hospital, they should try some happy, holistic, hippie horseshit instead of going to the hospital. You looked it up so that you could pronounce that correctly. Did you? <laughs> what, happy, hippie, holistic horseshit? No, I didn't look that up. That was actually on a um, podcast interview. I forget who it was with. Well, we know for well who it oh. came from. Cash? Uh, Carlin. Carlin. Happy hippie, happy hippie holistic or shit. Well, it, wait a minute. It might have... Okay. It might have started with Carlin and changed out over with uh, Seth Andrews. He does it, me. It is. So well, they're all about natural immunity. So if you get measles, then you have no immunity to anything at all. So yeah, yeah. Let's let's. Then they can go. Then then these uh, people who have nothing better to do than you know critique their neighbor's lawn and yell at them for keeping out the garbage can and hour pass pickup and all that other crap, along with all their anti vax stance. Um, they can go around and get some uh, chicken pox, you know, so that way they have a natural immunity to it. And then they can wait until it develops into shingles to have some natural immunity to shingles. I'm sure we could find somebody with chicken pox for them to have them spit all over their face, you know. I'm referencing the South Park episode. I'll there was an episode it. of South there was an episode of South Park where one of the kids got chicken pox, the other kids didn't have it. And instead of getting their kids vaccinated, they sent the kids over there and, and um I think it was Kyle's mom who tried to she, uh, told them, Well, you know, if you don't have it, uh, you should try playing a game where you spit in each other's mouths. Oh yeah. Pox parties. Oh yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> South Park is South Park, South Park. Let's leave it at that. Let's see one of the why do Okay. Either as it may. Um let's let's cover the obvious question. My idea offering up measles to reset these people who think that back bad voluntarily giving up their power of fighting off everything. That is um, morally sketchy, isn't it? Yep. Ethically corrupt. Yep. I, however, am not uncomfortable with this concept. Because it is another one of these situations of, folks, you want to go ahead and you want to prove your point that it's the it's it's the right way to go. Okay. Go ahead, reset everything. Show us that you're right. Give us the data that we need. We'll we'll do it. We'll document everything that happens for you, and then um you can go the same way as the Bertharians. While they bleached their buttholes in the sun. Oh, well, that's a different group. <laughs> that's a different group. 
there is one person that would really, really like to go for this voluntary thing. And he who shall not be named Why? Why wouldn't he? I mean, he claims that it's it's the right way to go, and what 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 better way of showing everybody that you're right? Except he's probably been immunized against it. I would bet. Well, I mean, you had Fox News anchors who were talking out against the COVID vaccinations while they were getting COVID vaccinations. Yep. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Stephanie's saying, not so sure about morally incorrect as this is for the greater good. Um, the greater good. <laughs> oh, come on. Nobody saw Hot Fuzz? Nope. No. Ah, oh, this is wasted. That's like you going, you know, to be fair, and nobody else in the room picking up on it. No. Get off my lawn. But everybody does get it. So there you go. <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, when uh, when Dallin had the opportunity of uh, taking a, a business trip again, got together mm -hmm. with a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of the folks from like all corners of of Canada and the U.S. and he he somebody ended up doing a to be fair. And a whole bunch of the folks around the table that they were sitting at for dinner went ahead and did it. And a whole bunch of the U.S. <laughs> folks in his contingent were just looking around going, what fuck are you guys doing? So, you know, it's, it's what it is. <sighs> I bet the people I was with earlier this evening would do that. Do what? The to be fair? To be fair thing, yeah. I'll have to ask them. So here's here's the here's the novel question. The next time we end up with people who are complaining one way or another about vaccinations, about you know, not even not even the whole Here's the list of chemicals. Which ones do you object to? All of them? Good. I just listed off all the chemicals that are in an apple. What about bringing this possibility up? You can volunteer to get rid of every vaccination you've ever had. Show us all that you're right. Get infected with this. And it'll reset everything. And you can just start from square one and have your natural immunity because vaccination's bad. You're just going to be starting off the same way that you did as if you never had a vaccination. So what's so wrong with this point? I am really, really wondering how many people would go for it. Because we know the number is less is is not zero. No, the number is going to be larger than zero. I really wonder how many people would actually. I really wonder that. Somebody should do a poll in one of those anti-vaxxer groups and ask. <laughs> then we get thrown out. Do, well, Just to no, see no, what wait, they no, say. Wait, no, wait. Because they're docs. <laughs> no, no, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're onto something here. You're onto something. Do we know anybody? Do we know a medical research prof uh, uh, professional who would be able to do a questionnaire like this. Not the guys from First Science, because they, they deal with uh, uh, they deal with stuff from a, a 
social, psychological stuff, sociological stuff, but from a medical or an immunologist. I I want to push for this. I want to put out the word. I want to I want to I want to flood out there on whatever social media circles we've got and see if we can find somebody who would be able to talk us through how do you even ask this question as part of a research thing? And then I want to see about it going out there. I would want to find out. The hardest part of it all would be Actually, I take it back. I was going to say that the hardest part of the whole thing would be how do you ask something like this in, in order to get, you know, proper accurate data. But I just realized the hardest part about it is what happens if somebody decides that that is actually what they're going to do? Well, that's their decision. That's their choice. But I'd be curious to know. It would be less. Oh my God. The enormity of what I am going through in my head. Let's say. Let's say, for arguments, that we end up hitting a group that had been, I don't know what the right word is, influenced by the big bad named who shall not be named, anti-vaccination person. We know who it is, we don't need to name Let's just call him ex-Dr. Dick. I mean, I don't know if his name is Richard, but I mean, I feel like I've known him long enough. I call him Dick. There are groups that have been so taken in by him and his rhetoric and his sales pitch. In groups that have been, in some cases, immigrants, if I remember right. Out the out the Midwest, the uh, up up north. If memory serves, there were groups that fell victim to him, who were African immigrants. I believe. I've forgotten exactly which group it was, but they had not been here long enough to have gotten. Education, quite as much as as others, and they just fell into it because they just kind of fell into it. I know for well the number would not be zero in a group like that. But what would that do? What would that end up doing? to a group, a community like that. I hate to say it. I would be devastated. Just the concept that what I could suggest would end up having people voluntarily killing them. And what this son of a bitch has done to too many damn people has ended up killing children for no other reason other than just to sell his own bullshit. How do you find the data without causing the data to happen? Well, I mean, just ask a simple question. You know, if 
you knew that catching measles would reset your immune system and undo the vaccinations that you've had, would you be willing to get it, yes or no? I, you know what? I, I think the question would have would have to be couched differently. Uh, Tech, you remember back uh, back in the, the the heyday for the MythBusters, they were going to be doing something with um, thermite. You and me, we we still remember the good old days of uh, uh, the pirates' toolbox on the Commodore sixty four and such, uh, the anarchist cookbook, which was also going around at the same time. And I have the last. I have a digital copy of the Anarchist Cookbook, not not the the food recipe version either. Okay, and back in the day, one of the things that I remember was like the big thing was how to make thermite. You remember that? Yeah. Back in the day, MythBusters was going to be making a buttload of thermite. And I'm trying to. I'm. I'm wondering. Do you remember how Adam showed everybody how to make thermite? Um, I don't. So, hold on a second. Because I'm wondering if you remember Sorry, the very it's, it's specific. Late my, it, it's late in the day, and my allergies actually to get to me worse at the end of the day. No, that's okay. I'm, um, I'm wondering if you actually remember the actual scene. I know this is a little bit esoteric, and, and I mean, this is the way that my brain works, but I'm, I'm, there's a reason why I'm asking you the, on this one. I don't think they... Um... Didn't they actually not show us how to make it? But pretty much on it. So what ends up what ended up happening is, uh, okay, I've got a, I've got a couple of things that'll uh, show this up really good on, on. on. So I've got a, well, it's an empty can of compressed air, but so so that folks kind of get the idea. Adam went ahead and 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 basically told everybody, look, we're going to be working with thermite, but I really shouldn't show you how to make it. So I'm going to use this this bottle of blur and it was it was a plastic bottle with a screw top and it had a label on it that was blurred out and this bottle of blur and again it was another plastic bottle with a whole label blurred out and i'm gonna mix them together and we're gonna have thermite mm -hmm. and he did it that way they did it that way to make sure that people wouldn't just know how to do it so the thing about thermite is that it's easy to make, but it's very dangerous to make. Like, you need a lot of protective wear. You should be wearing a fireproof apron. You should be wearing goggles. Um, I would go so far as saying that you're working with essentially powdered rust and powdered aluminum. So you should have some kind of, like, if you're not outdoors, you need to have a mask on. Because you don't want to breathe things. those powders in. They'll sh they're metals. They'll shred your lungs. You know? And one of the reasons why, if you watch Mythbusters or any of those other science-based shows that screw around with uh, thermite, the reason why they put them in ceramics is because you don't want these reacting with other metals. Okay? And this... I, I mean, thermite has legitimate uses. They use it for welding. Yep. Okay. So they they use well uh they even use thermite for uh cutting too. Because you can place the powder in patterns and set it off with a magnesium flare or magnesium strip because you got you got to get the stuff hot to get it to start. Right. And um you know, water doesn't put it out, so you'll actually find that there are things like thermite sticks and such that are used there's other things that are better but you know you have uh, options and thermites folks if you have no need for thermite do not make it just to see if you can make it 
it's really easy to get the stuff. It's really easy to make it. And it's really easy to kill yourself with it. So, you know, and this is coming from a guy who has, like, a knife collection and a lighter collection. And I like bonfires. I don't, you know, I don't do anything illegal. But I, I do like dangerous things. But even I don't go around making thermite because I have no need for it. Yeah, so the 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 point that I'm trying to get through, though, is something like this, I think, would be safer, relatively speaking, asked as if there was something that could reset all of the immunes that you've ever had and eliminate every vaccination that you've ever had since day one, would you do it? Because... Telling folks what that would be? We know for well what would happen within the first year. Because the number of people who would do it is larger than zero. Wherever they would congregate, the hospital services in that area in that year afterwards that they did it, Can you imagine a relatively small community suddenly a bunch of people just don't have immunizations for anything anymore and they end up en masse going to hospital services? What do you do? Somebody is dying from a cold, from rhinovirus. What do you do? I mean, normally, rhinovirus, we just, we just put up with it for a couple of days and, you know, that's it. You don't have any immunizations to anything. You don't, you don't have any, any built up immunities to anything. Rhinovirus is no joke at that point. Flu is no joke. I mean, what other, what other things are floating around that, you know, we, we don't even think about because we just don't have to. And suddenly you've got all of them. You go into the hospital and you tell the doctor, I've got everything because I don't have an immune system anymore because I, in, I got myself infected with measles. What do you do as the medical professional in that group at that point? And I, I'm asking a serious question. What do you do? Cause me, I'm 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 not medically trained. But even I have to look at it and go, damn. If you're triaging somebody from the standpoint of who needs more help than somebody else, who's got best chance of surviving and, and recovery and who voluntarily put themselves into that position I don't know where to put somebody in a trial I mean Bridget I, I'm, I'm going to pass it over to you for a second do you have any knowledge whatsoever and I'm expecting you probably wouldn't any knowledge whatsoever would there even be a problem protocol for a situation like this where people have come in and they have voluntarily wiped their immunity system and now they're coming in with everything I don't think that there is because I mean shit where would you even start you know I could think of one particular way that wiping somebody's immune system might be beneficial. All right. Testing new versions of old vaccines. Oh. To really... To, now, granted, that's a long stretch. Okay. But if you're trying to... You, you've got all your scientific laboratory study stuff done. 
but you can't give it to, but maybe because of the type of vaccine, trying to give it to somebody, it doesn't really work because they already have the other immunity going on. So it doesn't take effect. So you have to find somebody, but you're not willing to do it to a kid. And now maybe science has figured out how to use the effect of measles to wipe the immune system without putting somebody in danger of the side effect of measles, right? Uh, make the function of measles to strip it away, to use it as a tool. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm talking science fiction here at this point. No, but you. science fiction has a habit of becoming science fact. True. Um, I mean, hell, we're just breaking ground now on teleportation, although it's at a molecular level or, or atomic level or whatever it was, and it was from um, using a laser. So it wasn't the kind of transportation we see in Star, Star Trek, but, you know, you got to start somewhere. Well, um, I guess you could start with people who's had their immune systems wiped out by uh, you know, chemotherapy or something. Exactly. If if they would be willing to be a test subject, I don't think too many of them would be, but... Eh, you can always give somebody incentive. There's plenty of people in this country that uh, need it. They, they, they would need the incentive. They could be taken advantage of like that. I'm not saying that they should be taken advantage of. I'm just saying it, 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 there are situations in this country because our lack of universal health care and everything else um, that actually make them susceptible to wanting to volunteer wait a minute there are a number of diseases that are literally the body's immune system attacking the body right mm -hmm. um what happens if you give reset everything it. the big reset it I mean, may actually be more harmful. It may make measles more uh, deadly, lethal. If they're already in a stage where the immune system's attacking it's, it's the body. Well, yes, but if if you if you if you, re I'm not a right. virologist. As, so. Assuming the science fiction aspect, where we figure out how to take the measles virus and convert it into just a reset button for the immune system. Who knows? That might actually be a viable option, a, a viable ability to taking out the stuff that kills you by having your immune system attack your own body. But there's no there's no guarantee that when you start to try to build up the immune system after reset, that it won't start attacking the body again. True. So that would be something that would have to be tested. That's where you start to get into the ethics. Oh, yeah. All right. AFK a moment. <laughs> you know, there are sometimes I, I really question whether what I end up thinking about is good or bad, right or wrong from, from a, a moral position. This is one of those nights where, man, I, I, I really have to think about this because I don't. This one is not a cut and dry. Day. I never, I never would have imagined coming down to this point of wondering about this. Holy boy! I really got to think about that. Um, Stephanie also pointed out um, from. Apparently, you know, the, the whole thing as far as to, you know, resetting people, what do you do with them? Put them in another building and offer basic care. I mean, thanks. I mean, here in the States, you're, you're born, um, you get the first couple of, uh, first couple of injections, uh, within the first couple of hours, you know, within a, within a weekend worth of time going back home with family. I don't know about this. I do. I want you to think about something that you said a moment ago. Sure. You said a moment ago 
you know, you don't know how you, this makes you feel thinking, right? Essentially. Yeah. Okay. Well, I would argue that you should feel fine thinking about them for the simple reason being that thinking about them, doing these mental experiments, these thought experiments and such, technically, if you leave it at just a thought experiment stage, does no harm. Okay, thinking about the possibility of a scientific advancement of manipulating the measles virus into a reset button for a human uh, immune system. You're thinking about a hypothetical. And you have done no harm. Um, you can toss around the ideas with other people. Those people can toss around the ideas, hypotheticals. Uh, maybe they'll actually talk to real scientists and such. And when you're talking about it and you're thinking about it and running the ideas through your head, you're not doing the harm. The harm comes in from acting upon those ideas and those thoughts. Will you and I ever get into science and the scientific you know, medical field and try to create a reset button out of the measles virus? Uh, I would bet dollars to donuts that the answer is going to be no. That'd be good donut. Well, you know. But, but still, um, <laughs> now I, is there somebody else out there that might maybe? Then what does it get used for? Does it get used to attack another country of people and destroy their immune systems and then launch a uh, a flu virus and kill them off? You know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Or is it used for some of the potentially, I say potentially positive situations because we don't know if they really would be or not. But we'd like to think that it might be a potentially good solution to a really bad thing happening to a human being because we generally want good things for people and we care. And we've all seen somebody going through pain and suffering and wish we could do something and, you know, all we can do is stand by and tell them we love them or be there for them or their families and so on and so forth. We have the, you know, we care. And a lot of good has been done in the name of caring, and a lot of bad has been done in the name of caring. But we're just doing thought experiments. We're not actively trying to uh, go out and do this. We're not actively encouraging the science community to try to do this stuff. We're doing what ifs. And I would argue that even an anti-vaxxer can do a what if. What if I don't get the shingles vaccine? What if I don't get this? And it's like, okay, that's great. Those are questions we can look up and we can look at the scientific facts and we can look at the statistics and we can look at the th numbers and crunch those together. And then act with a good heart, you know? Use, use the logic, use your reasoning and act upon it at that point. But asking the questions and thinking about uh, the potential I would argue is not harmful. I don't see harm in books that have conflicting thoughts, con conflicting uh, statements, and so on. What I see harm in is is using them and acting upon them. Like Mein Kampf, Mein Kampf from Hitler. Um, I would argue, it, it, some people argue that the book should be burned and never put on a shelf. It's like, no, actually, I think it can be used for good. I think it can be used as a reference tool to understand and study that mindset that occurred. It doesn't have to be used for bad things. You know, it's just like a hammer. Oh, somebody dropped a hammer and broke their toe. Throw the hammer out. No, the hammer's still good for hammering nails. Just because it got misused or it was uh, uh, misunderstood or it was an accident doesn't make the hammer inherently evil. Can thoughts and words convey evil things? Yes. Do we have to act upon them? No. Mein Kampf, whatever. I don't pronounce German. Points me. No, you said it right. Oh, I did? Okay. Yeah, I was just... <laughs> I had heard it am... actually referred to as, as this, what I typed out earlier this evening. I am not joking. <laughs> I believe you. You know, when I hear the, the, the conservatives say, oh, we can't have this book in, in child's uh, schools because it's sexual in nature. Wait, you're, all you're taking away from this particular book is that sexual in nature when it just mentions that, you know, the 
child saw their adult mother and other adult mother kiss in the kitchen. That's not sex. That's a kiss. But they blow it out of proportion or whatever the case might be. And it's like, look, people have gay parents. They have gay siblings. They have gay relatives. Hiding books that have homosexuality in it is not doing a good thing because you're hiding reality from them. That's why I say, don't destroy Mein Kampf. Let it be in print. Let it be on the shelf. Don't hide reality. Reality is dirty. It's brutal. It's ugly. But it's also beautiful, loving, and caring. It just depends on what you're putting out there. You know, that's, you know, I would like to not see people follow religion anymore. But I think we should hold on to the religious texts. We need them as reference material as to how things happened, how people fell into these mindsets, what was done in these words, in these books. And people would disagree with me on that. And that's okay, because we're having, we're talking about ideas. We're throwing stuff around. Bridget, um, considering that we're getting pretty close to the end, um, you got anything, uh, you got anything left over? Anything that you want to tell me at this point? Um, I really don't. Just, I hope, 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 hope that there's not huge measles outbreaks in various places over this foolishness in Kentucky. And since it has a 21-day incubation period, I guess we'll find out soon. Um, let me check. When was the end? Because it tells me... I think the exposure was February 18th. The report was March 2... February 8th to February 19th. So, yeah. well, I think 18th was when they had the biggest attendance or had the exposure. Something uh, like that. Yeah. So, we are, t if we're going to be hearing about it, we're going to be hearing about it now. So, yes, uh, oh, that's that. that would be perfect because that would mean that any of the uh, any of the first reporting that might be happening from might be happening while I'm gone. <laughs> I really hope it comes. In. I really cannot. I hope that that ends up being it's not going to be a nothing burger because it's going to be spread out over so many different. It's going to take. Piece it up. Well, if we start having you know community outbreaks, then we'll have our answer. We'll have to wait. Uh, I at this point, I think it's worth calling it a night because it is it is about that. So, folks, as always, thanks for being with us. Hope that you had yourself a good night with us and. Uh, you something to think about for the week ahead uh, again as a reminder uh, the time zone change is happening but In fortunately hour. yeah so fortunately there is not going to be a show next week as we're recording this we'll be back uh two weeks afterwards uh because like i said i'm i'm, I'm gonna be taking a, a weekend trip out and uh i'll give everybody uh I'll make sure that there is an update all over the place to make sure that everybody is aware of this. And um, maybe I will put out the word and ask if there are any 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 science uh, statisticians, biologists, ecologists, anybody that might be able to come on to kind of follow up on this because I or not, I think it's a worthwhile question. 
Dr. Conroy might be interested. It's not his area of expertise, but you are right. I think that he might find this fascinating. He's not a biologist. He's a chemist by trade, but... Doesn't matter. You know what? It, it wouldn't hurt for me to go ahead and ask. It wouldn't hurt for me to ask. I will, I will, I will, I'll put out the word and see what might be able to get out of it all. So we'll see what happens. Um, Stephanie, sorry you're the only one tonight, but <laughs> thanks for, thanks for staying up with us. Um, in, in all seriousness, I hope everything stays safe for you guys over there, temperature wise. And just thank you. And again, just thank you for understanding. Take good care of yourself. Stay warm, stay dry, eh? Um, Bridget, you came in last, so you go out first. Mm -hmm. So, I think the question on everybody's mind is, how many cases of champagne would you like to send to gravity? I must have missed something, but then again, I've been kind of like away from media and away from the computer. What did I miss? Somebody fall down, go boom. Ooh, who fall down and go boom? Somebody old, wizened, turtlesque. Ooh, really? That's too bad. Yay, gravity. Concussion. And then there are people all... They lived. Yeah, there are people on all kinds of social media who are saying you're just being mean people and you shouldn't be talking about and, and, and praising the, the pain and suffering of another human being to which we would answer? Well, wait a you minute. You first. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, the, the guy fell down and got a concussion. Obviously, it's God's will. Well, that's funny. You should put it that way. So, That's what uh, people tell they... me when my friends get hurt or die. Like, you know, when somebody I know dies from COVID and they're like, oh, it was, you know, God's will, and then their family member gets hurt, and I look at them and go, well, it was God's will, and they say that me saying it's offensive. Mm -hmm. Well, as far as I'm concerned, well, Tech, you can tell them to just fuck right off and tell them I said so. At least it was a, a self pwn and somebody didn't beat him in the head with a hammer. Sure, I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm sure you don't either. Maxwell Silver can get down. But uh, do you have a, a particular FU that you would like to uh, throw out there at this point? Because you've had, you know, you've had some time to consider. Oh, wow. I don't know what's been going on the last couple of weeks. Doesn't I mean, matter. seriously. So, I mean, ignorance is bliss. Um, I can, I can give a big F you to, uh, oh, Sean Hannity Good one. for having, uh, the former guy on and the former guy coming out and saying that this whole Ukrainian and Russian thing, he could work out some kind of a deal and give some land to, uh, Russia, that he he would have made that happen. Uh huh. That pissed me off. Who does he think he is? On the opposite side of the spectrum from that, by the way, congratulations on NAFA getting their patches. Did you see those? I saw them. Did you see the plaque from President Zelensky? No. Yes, he autographed a, a plaque addressed to NAFO and thanked us for all of our help and contributions. I kid you not. I'm sorry. I'm just thinking to myself, crowdfunded warfare. Um, By I... a bunch of cartoon dogs. You know... Indirectly, this is one way of getting the furry community behind y'all. 
Well, thank you. We ended up coming up with enough money to buy some uh, four-wheel drives. That way they could transport hurt and injured you know, soldiers and, and get them help. So um, anyway, he and his uh, organization thanked us. Good man. Sign a plaque for us. Good job. For yeah. Tech, thank you for uh, making sure I was not going to be the only one here so that I wasn't scared out of my gourd. <laughs> Glad you were able I'm to I'm sorry it. I was so late that I showed up. It uh, just, internet happens. But I did show up. That's okay. On the bright I side, I showed up last week too, but I didn't know that there wasn't a show. <laughs> yeah, well, and and on the bright side, I've now learned that there is a way for me to ring someone that's supposed to be on the call anyway, without disconnecting anything. So, cool. Something. Anyway, tech. Um, thank you many times over. I, I just thank you, and I hope that you have yourself a good week ahead. Yeah, you too. I will. Uh, I will. I will try very hard not to uh, overdo it on the um, oil stuff. Because remember, I don't. I don't. I don't have a gallbladder anymore. So if I go like really heavy on the oil, bad things. Bad things. <laughs> You'll have some issues. Gobs yes. of napalm. That's one way of looking. In the meantime, everybody, again, thank you very much for being with us. If you'd like hey, to be in know, touch... There's one person I'd like to say an F you to. Oh. Well, by the, all means. The uh, governor of Arkansas. Oh, I, I can't stand her. Yeah, well, she just helped repeal a portion of the Youth Hiring Act of 2023 that protects children under the age of 16. Um, it rolls back the part where the state had to verify the age of the child before they were... Uh, if they were under 16 uh, before they take a job and uh, the children don't have to get the state's permission, the department of labor's permission to be employed anymore. Though the, the, the governor is doing it on the whole premise of it makes it easier for the children to actually get hired. And it puts the responsibility on the, the burden on the parents instead of the state. Because uh -huh. it doesn't change like the hours that they're allowed to work, or what kind of jobs they are allowed to work. But this is just one step in many. And Arkansas and many other states, they have companies where they keep getting in trouble for hiring children, working jobs that they're legally not allowed to work, or working hours they're legally not to work, or they're of ages they're legal not supposed to be. And I mean, Iowa and Minnesota are already working on putting in laws in a place to allow the kids to work in meatpacking plants and construction. And it's like, uh, you know all those kids that died for those laws? Yeah, you're dancing on their graves right now. That's fantastic. That's that's great. Uh, they are literally trying to take us back into time. Yep. And the funny part back of it when is... black people didn't ride on the, you know, they, they didn't go to the same schools. They rode in the back of the bus. You know, there was no gay community. There was no trans community. And the thing is, wow. uh, I'm thinking about it from the standpoint of, okay, you're going to have kids um, 15, 16 years old, uh, 14 years old, uh, earning money, paying taxes. Are you then going to uh, allow them to vote? Because nope. um, if they're earning money... Don't they have a stake in where their taxes are going to? Or are you going to forego them taxes so that they don't have to until they are 18 years old and everything that they earn is their own? No, they won't be allowed to vote till they're adults, but they can work in a meatpacking plant. Which oh, means they can get uh, married, too. They can get married, they can get pregnant, but they, they can't have an abortion. You know, because they're not mature enough for that. So we uh, we wait and see how that plays. And uh, good call. Good There's call. a reason why I'm, I'm definitely 
giving serious thought and consideration to Failing. time to immigrate or emigrate. Yep. Yeah. I've been thinking the same thing. We'll have to wait and see how that plays out. On the bright side, you might end up at a place where the uh, internet is more stable and less expensive, but we can talk about that later. <laughs> Meanwhile, we will be looking forward to seeing you guys again in two weeks. Yes, in two weeks. Take a swing over to the homepage, holycrapthevlogcast.com. All our information is there for contact. The audio version of the podcast is available in the streaming system. The phone number, and uh, I'm kind of giving consideration to whether or not to keep it because I don't get use out of it at this point. But for the time being, at least, is 859-HCTV-554, 859-4288-554. We will be looking forward to talking to you again soon. So, till the next time we're together in two weeks, I wish you all peace I no longer have. I wish you the strength that I've learned. I wish you well. My lady, it is too damn many years later. You know, I am still in love. Matane Fuji, I love you. I miss you. Dream of me. Till the next time we're together, everyone, as always, good.